Hello folks, this video is in response to a new announcement that you may have seen at the top of your Ancestry DNA match page. Updates coming soon to DNA matches. We're making changes that will improve the accuracy and quality of your DNA matches. Sounds great, but it's got a lot of Ancestry members quite exercised. And the reason why is this. Distant DNA matches must share 8 centimorgan or higher. So what Ancestry is saying is that from the time that this change comes into place, which will be early August, that they are going to remove from your match list your DNA matches that are below 8 centimorgans and that your future matches, they will not show up for you in the future. Now, there's nothing we can do about losing out on these future matches. But if you do nothing, you are going to lose a very large chunk of your current DNA matches. Now, there are some exceptions, and Ancestry have listed them here. What they will do is they will, they will continue to, to show them to you if you have added a note to the match, added them to a custom group, or if you have messaged them. Okay, so I'm just going to jump into some tactics and strategies which will let you retain your DNA matches. So I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. I had a look out there on the internet to see who was grappling with this. And the most comprehensive article that I found to date, and I'm sure many more will be produced, is from Roberta Estes. I'm going to put her link to this article down in the description. But what Roberta does is she gives detailed background. If you scroll right down, what she gives is some preservation strategies. So she's worked on this really quickly and she's produced step by step kind of tutorial style guide here. And the basic strategy is to create a new custom group and then figure out the most efficient way to add matches which are most likely to be useful to your research. First things first is, uh, for me anyway, is adding a custom group. I have never used the group system. So I'm just going to try and figure that out quickly because I do agree that that is the fastest way to go about it. So I'm just going to click on group here. So what I'm going to do here, that's simple enough. I'm going to create custom group. I get 24 groups, I see. This is all new to me. And I am going to call it preserve low matches. I'll give it a color of pink and click save. So now I have my preserve low matches group. Now that I've got my group and I can see that beside every match, there is a plus, presumably I click plus on this. Yeah. And then I just select the group. Okay. So that's simple enough. So what Roberta is suggesting is a way of identifying the matches that are going to be most likely useful to you. Her first suggestion or first strategy is if you've used a third party tool for auto clustering. Now, many of you won't have, so I'm not going to go through this particular strategy. Her second strategy is to use through lines. Roberta is saying is on your through lines page, click on any ancestor appearing on that page. Now, I don't think this is the most efficient way of going about this, so, but I'll just work my way through it and then I'll offer a suggestion. I really have very few um, true line offerings, but I'm going to click on this particular ancestor. Then Roberta says, says to click on the list option. OK, click on list, expand this. And certainly what I am now seeing is a particular match. And you can see this match is quite low at 8 centimorgan. But I don't have any way from here to quickly add this particular person to a group. Let's say she was seven centimorgan. I'm still going to have to what go into and from here add to group. Okay, that is okay. So it's just one more click. But if I wanted to add her to a group, okay, I would click on preserve no matches. So I don't particularly want to use this list page. It's just one extra click. I think that another strategy that Roberta suggests, I'm just going to scroll down to the, here, is where she's suggesting to use common ancestors. And she says common ancestors equate the two lines. Well, if we use the common ancestor me method, click on common ancestors. And from here, I'm going to enter a custom centimorgan range. I'll just enter six to eight. Apply. 
But the point is that on the main list page with this common ancestors filter, I straight away I can add the match to a group. And if I had 20 displaying here that were under seven centimorg and I could just hit add group, add group, add group, I could just work my way more quickly down the list. Now, the other thing I want to note is to be very careful about this number here, share DNA, eight centimorg. The reason why I'm just going to remove the filter, the common ancestors, and I'm going to remove the six to eight filter, and I'm going to show all matches. Okay, so I've just gone back to my full list, and I'm just going to scroll down. And let's say it was the 30 centimorgan threshold that I was interested in, and any matches below 30 centimorgan were going to disappear. It's just because I don't want to do too much scrolling. If I want to identify matches by eye that are below 30 centimorgan, what I might do is scroll down until I get visual sign of the threshold is being crossed. So we've got this match, this match, and then suddenly I'm crossed over into the 29 centimorgan. So if I was applying some rules saying, well, I only want to work with matches that are that are 30 centimorgan and above, that they are not below 30 centimorgan, this visually would be my cutoff point because Ancestry is telling me that this match, HB, is 20 centimorgan and above, whereas these two matches here are both at 30 centimorgan. Well, it isn't true. This is a new match. I'm going to skip over this match here because it just happens to be a new match. But I do have the match above in my database. She's been there for quite a while. I know she isn't 30 centimorgan. So I know that that particular match isn't 30 centimorgan, a nice fat round number of 30 centimorgan. That match in Ancestry's database is 29.78 centimorgan. What Ancestry does is in the display, although stored kind of behind the HTML, there is a number saying 29.78. When they go to display it, just to make a nice clean display, they round it up to 30, which means this threshold here, it's not a cutover. This person is below 30 centimorgan, but at 29.78 is being rounded up to 30 for the point of view of this display. As you can't actually enter, what I really would like to do is when I'm doing a range, I'd like to be able to enter 6 to 7.99, but you can't. You can't enter, enter a decimal number. So if you're going to click on Common Ancestors and then further restrict using Share DNA on 6 to 8, click Apply, I don't know if that filter is going to be genuine. I don't know if this particular match is actually 7.9 centimorgan and will disappear. The answer is to stay safe. Just keep it safe. And with those eight centimorgan matches, I'm going to add them both to my group. So at this point, um, having followed Roberta's advice of using common ancestors, I've got two that are at ancestors telling me they're at eight centimorgan. I'm going to add them both to this particular group. So my nice purple preserve low matches preserve low matches. And if it's a choice between doing two lines or common ancestors, if they're both the same, then this is my preferred method because I just get one list and on that list page, I can straight away, one click, add to the group that I want. And the next strategy, I really like this one and I might necessarily have thought of it in a hurry, and that is to using search filters. So what she's suggesting here is that you search for surnames or unique locations Filter down a match list, then look for the low centimorgan matches below eight centimorgan and possibly add them into the group so that they won't disappear. Now, the funny thing is that these search filters used to be awful. And they, the functionality at one time just it wouldn't work. But I will say that now, 2020, this functionality, as I haven't seen any glitches with it. You can see in the drop down here. This is one of my favorite um, ancestral surnames to search on because it's relatively unusual. I'm going to click on search and I'm now going to filter down apply and that's a little bit slow, but you can see it populating. And here we've got all these seven centimorgan matches that are going to disappear unless I do something about it. I certainly don't want to lose these people. So all of them 
go into my preserve group. And it would be really nice if there was a faster way than just maybe if I work from the bottom up. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be a little bit less moving. If I work from the top down, you just notice I click plus here, then I go and click on my preserve load matches. Now I have to, in order to get to the next box, to the next match, this box is covering up the screen for the next plus at the group. So I have to click away to get it to go away and then I get to the at the group. So instead I'm going to work my way from the bottom up. So there's a little time saver for you. So click on plus at group, add it to my preferred group. And now I just have to click the next one and the next one the next one so don't, i'm saving you a click so that was using the surname search i'm just going to reset the can I reset filters yeah and now i'm going to use the birth location in matches trees and just search on the county i'm going to get a lot more matches and it is going to take time to work my way through them and here we have a tree that's linked, but it's private. So I'm not interested in private trees. So I want to exclude them. I'm trying to save myself some time here. I'm going to add a tree filter to say that it must be a public linked tree. We have to scroll down as far as we can. And I'm still scrolling. I'm down here now to the six centimorgans across one segment. Um, it's just a question of waiting for this circle to complete spinning. It is ridiculously inefficient. But here's the thing. I'm going to do this in tranches. It's not reasonable just to keep scrolling down and hope that I get to the end. I'm going to work on my seven centimorgan matches first. So I'm just going to search here now. I'm going to filter on the threshold of seven to seven. This gives me the ability now, and these are only public trees is by scrolling down, I should get to the end of the list. And when I've done all the seven centimorgans, I can take off the filter and put it back on six to six. And if you're like me, you're kind of groaning and thinking, oh, surely there must be a better and faster way. Best outcome would be if someone knocked up a Chrome extension, go and find all my matches that are below eight centimorgan and automatically add them to group. The problem is that we're in mid-July and this change is going to take place possibly the 1st of August. So there isn't a huge amount of time to put together that Chrome extension. I will be keeping an eye out to see if anybody else has done it. And if they have, I will report back on my blog.